Um, with that said, um, hello, my name is Susan Sherwood. I'm a project manager with Wendell Companies. We are a full um, scale architecture and engineering firm. We specialize in public transportation. I have with me one of my partners today, um, Scott Neal. He'll be stepping up here in a few minutes um, to talk with you a little bit about this project. Essentially, we've been retained by the city of Lawrence to look at two um, sites, one being the site um, at Bob Billings near the campus at Crestline um, for the location of a multimodal transportation facility, as well as for a downtown transportation um, transit center as well. Um, we've been on site since this morning um, meeting with stakeholders. We were out touring the sites um, with a group earlier today. Um, and now we are meeting with various stakeholder groups to get feedback and input about big high level ideas you might have, concerns you might have, um, ideas for amenities or services that might, might need to be accommodated at both sites and both locations. With that, um, I know we are running a little bit late and some of you might have to jump off at three o'clock. So if there's anyone who wants to give us any like preliminary commentary before you have to leave, that's great, jump right in here. If not, um, we can always schedule an offline conversation one-on-one -on -one with one of our team members in you all, or maybe even another group meeting at some other time. So I'll leave it to you. What time, what, this is Gary Weber. What time are you going to end this meeting? Uh, this meeting is scheduled to end at 3.30, I believe. Yeah. Um, but we might be able to stretch it a little bit past that. What time is this meeting supposed to end at? 3.30. Okay, that, that's 50, that's 40 minutes. I, I think that's enough for me. If I need to, I'll set up a separate meeting. Okay. Um, David Day, it looks like you might need to jump off at three o'clock. Was there anything preliminarily you wanted to share with us before you had to leave or would you rather we reach out to you and schedule a separate conversation? No, mostly I'm just here to listen. Okay. I do communicate. I, I do communications on behalf of KU Wheels and Transportation Services at KU. Okay, excellent. Well, it's nice to meet you. Sorry, sorry, we're running late today. We're having a little little communication problems here with our, our technology, but hopefully we're well on our way. And these will be recorded, so you'll be able to listen to them later on as well. So with so, that, um, looks like we might have Ali on again. She's got like the. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm learning your numbers here. Um, we have Mindy, Marshall, Andrew, and Gary, um, and David on the call. So we'd be, you know, really interested to hear your thoughts or questions. Okay, I, I have a thought or question. If no one's going to go, I can I can start off if you'd like. There, it's all yours. Okay, so my name is Marshall Mod, and I wasn't able to be there this morning because I'm on sabbatical. I'm a professor. At, at KU. And so I'm out of the state, but, uh, you know, the, from, from when this project started, I, uh, I started, uh, or I'm associate professor of the department of visual art and I've been working with, uh, professor Keith Vanderreet. And I don't know if you've talked to Mike rounds about this, but the usage of that maintenance warehouse on the site, um, you know, on the crest line site, that the use of that maintenance warehouse has changed since KU got involved with this project. And there's an interest from some parties to have that building stay intact. And I was just curious about what the, like I looked at some of the preliminary site plans and it looks, it looks to me that they can coexist, but I don't know what the conversation around that has been, or if there needs to be some further discussion on that. Sure, I'm going to turn over to Scott to talk to you. Yeah. You want to come on the camera? Yep. So Thank you. you. Um, so at this point, um, you know, we're, we're, we're not sure about those buildings. Um, we have, a, if you're familiar with the site, there's quite a bit of uh, interesting um, grades. Um, it's, you know, probably depending on what part of the site you are talking about, somewhere around you know, 15 or 20 feet of, of grade change. So um, buses like it level, um, you know, people accessing the site would like level. So so we're gonna work through that. Um, I will say the program itself is, but we have to 
You're breaking up pretty severely. Yeah, the internet connection here is not great. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe it's the microphone, I don't know. It's our internet connection. Um, I don't know. I think it might be the microphone. You're perfect, yeah, but he, he yeah, just started perfect. breaking. He just started breaking up. Okay. Oh. I don't think your microphone's Yeah, talk louder like me, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Is that better? That's better. There you go. Okay. Yeah, so... That's good. So I'll summarize. The... The um, the program easily fits on the site without adversely affecting the warehouses. Where the complexity is is accommodating the grade changes on on the site. Uh, that's going to chew up real estate. Uh, there's probably another point, but grade changes. They're breaking up. Again. He's breaking up again. Breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we're we figured out this auditorium is not is not our friend for these public meetings. Now your video's locked. <laughs> Maybe don't use the microphone. Microphone, just get closer to the the PC. It, it, the PC is not. No, it's only microphone. The only thing that, there is no audio through anything other than the microphone right now. Mm -hmm. um, because of the way the room is set up, we've got speakers in the ceiling, so we can't use our PC. Right. Um, I think. I think going forward, we're, we're all going to go completely remote because I think we're we're tapping into the university's internet system, and it's not. There's just too many people on Zoom at one time. I believe here. So we're bringing each other. We can hear you perfectly. No, you're breaking up again. Hmm. How about this? Can you hear this? Yes, but it, it lasts about 30 seconds and then it quits. Um, could we make use of this time okay. by, by making a presentation? I, I have about a 10 minute, I have about 10 minutes of input and or, or a little less. So I could go now if, if everyone can hear me, I could I could speak for Sunset Hill Neighborhood Association. Yes, that'd be fine. Go for it. Okay. Any chance you could share my screen? Yeah. Any yeah, chance you would, should give I me sharing rights? Share. Yeah, I was going to say if you want to put it in the chat or just start um, okay. talking. Okay. Here, Weber, it's actually. Yeah, I'm just okay. Well, it's, it's quite a long. It's quite a long document. So I. So I'll, I'll just read off of it and send you this outside. There's, my name is Gary Weber. I'm the president of Sunset Hill Neighborhood Association. Sunset Hills is in unique position. It's the only neighborhood association or neighborhood adjacent to the billing site. So I'm going to talk with you mostly about the billing site here. I, I haven't seen much on downtown. But obviously, we want access to downtown. But this is mostly about the billing site, and this comes over two years of discussion in our neighborhood association, in annual meetings, in quarterly executive committee meetings, in extended email conversations, and finally, in a letter to the city commission. In the city commission letter, which was voted on 7-1 by the executive committee, we supported the billings location, but we said that we were going to watch closely about how it affected our neighborhood. So this is our chance to have some input into the neighborhood, into how it affects our neighborhood. So concerns, there, are you understanding me? Oh, everything okay? Okay, here are five concerns that came over once again and again. Uh, since I live close to the intersection, I've seen many accidents and know that it's a busy, dangerous intersection. Will the traffic study include accident data? When are you going to do your traffic study? And if so, will it contain accident data for that intersection, both pedestrian and vehicular? It's a busy intersection, and we can think that a transfer facility would only increase that. 
Uh, in addition, when the lead center releases or the cave sport of Van Ends or a traffic, the traffic at that intersection is terrible. The lead center is used for more than just entertainment. It's used for other events throughout the year, orientation, move in, graduation. And, and that also contributes to traffic at that busy intersection. Uh, it can often back up almost to Iowa to the east and a good deal down the road to the west. So there's some very, very severe traffic issues at certain times. It's a heavy pedestrian traffic from Meadowbrook and other nearby multi-unit housing crossings on all corners of the Billings Crestline intersection. Meadowbrook has room to expand east of Crestline and north of Billings, which would further increase the pedestrian traffic at this intersection. Finally, the, uh, want to, well, finally, the intersection has had flooding issues in the past. The city's made stormwater changes, but in a downpour, there's still drainage issues at that intersection that should be addressed. So safety, flooding. There's also a concern over noise. Once Meadowbrook years ago took down all the trees on that hill and built the new apartments, noise became really apparent from, from Billings and Crestline. What is the level of increased noise to be expected from all the additional buses? There are people in the neighborhood, especially near that intersection are concerned about noise. Here are some questions. I'm about done, about four more minutes. When are you going to conduct a traffic study? Regarding the traffic study, how will entrance and exit to the facility take place? Are buses only coming from the west? If they come from the east, where do they come in? Do they have to cross traffic? Do they have to turn left? Two, will there be an increase on traffic on Crestline? It's a busy collector and is adjacent to two schools north of the proposed site. So will, and, and the same thing goes of, of Billings Parkway. Will traffic increase on Billings Parkway? What is the number of accidents annually at the intersection? Will the traffic study include accident information? And finally, what is the, what is the increase in traffic at work travel, lead center events, and sporting events? The neighborhood's very concerned about those particular times and whether we're going to have a problem with traffic at that intersection and on that street. In addition, what is the potential density of future Meadowbrook apartments on the east side of Crestline? How would this affect the Bob Billings Parkway Crestline and their intersection? You may know that there's a large open expansive area uh, adjacent to the intersection owned by Meadowbrook Apartments. If that was developed for either commercial or, or housing, that would have a very big effect on the intersection. What is the potential density? Oh, I said that. What issues does a public library have with the current location they use on 7th Street? Will the new facility have the same types of issues that the public, is ex public library is experiencing now? If so, how do you plan to deal with those? One last question. Will having a transfer facility on Bob Billings Parkway encourage Meadowbrook? We don't know. This is a guess. Will it encourage Meadowbrook to ask for a zoning change and develop retail along that street? It has attempted this before and was not successful and opposed by the neighborhood. So the neighborhood is very concerned about very concerned. OK, I'm done. Any questions? Where do I submit these documents? Um, so, Gary, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so this is Susan Sherwood. I just put my email in the comments section. It is S is in Susan Sherwood, S H E R W O O D. Got it. Bendelcompanies.com. Got it. Could you email that document to me and I will share it with the rest of our team members? And what we'll do is we will address those concerns and either an email back to you or a larger response to all the stakeholder groups. We will include all your commentary as part of the entire stakeholder program we're doing. I think we have 11 stakeholder meetings over the next, between today and tomorrow. Um, so we will make sure we get you answers to anything we can answer at this point in time. Well, okay. a lot of questions on there about future development plans and some may or may not have anything to do with us. Um, some I'm aware of, some of them I'm not aware of. So we'll have to get some information from the client and from others as well in order to be able to answer some of your questions. But I sincerely appreciate you being so thoroughly prepared. Um, so I think this will actually be very helpful for us moving forward into the next stages of the project. Okay, Sherry, I'll send those to you. I want you to We're know that- more audio problems on our end. We're having some trouble hearing you guys. Um, I heard you perfectly, Gary, for most of your presentation, but now we are either frozen on internet issues or something, I don't know. Um, or it's Zoom, could even be Zoom. Um, we did have a couple of new people join us. Looks like Vicki and De Deanna, maybe? 
And uh, I saw Uncle Eric's name. I don't see him up there. Is he up there? I saw him in the waiting room, but now I don't see him. Yes, up. Bill Eric's there. He is there. He looks like he's froze, but he oh, is. There one he of, is. He, he's one of the, uh, yeah, he's an officer in, in the Neighborhood Association. Okay, great. I, I do have a request also. Sure. Uh, I, I'm not sure if we're at the building um, design stage or if this is just to do with traffic, but traffic was, was my other real concern. Uh, Gary has pretty well convinced me that this is a re reasonable location. Um, one, the, the one request I have would, would apply to any city building. You know, the city has made a commitment uh, to carbon neutrality for all uh, city facilities. And I, I sure would like to see uh, energy uh, efficiency as part of the design, as well as solar uh, panels for the roof. I think every building we put up needs to have solar panels. Um, so that, that's, that's really my, my, my suggestion. I like it. And so um, we do have a meeting, a joint meeting um, scheduled for tomorrow, I believe, with uh, members of the design team, as well as a larger group from our firm and our team, the technical team which will include our, our sustainability group. They're gonna look at everything from daylighting to energy conservation to photovoltaics, as well as electric battery buses and stormwater management and everything green infrastructure you can imagine. is gonna be placed on the table for discussion between the city, the university and the design um, engineers and architects. So that is definitely gonna be a component of this. I don't know what that means today. Um, we are not at the building design stage right now. We're the conceptual stage where we're trying to fit the program onto the sites to determine where the constraints are and what the opportunities are. So as this progresses, this is going to be a process we're going to go through over the next couple of months. Um, and then we'll be able to have more clarity, more information for you as we move through the, the detailed design. Great. And we'll be back. I don't know what we said, a month or six weeks or something that, like that from now to bring to the stakeholders and the public the concept designs that we develop coming out of this week. So you're gonna get a chance to see a little bit more nitty gritty detail um, in just about a month or so um, from us. Oh, and Marshall, Marguerite wanted want me to let you know that, oh, I think I lost, oh, he's there. You know that there was another meeting earlier that did have provost in, others from the university here talking with us. We were on site with them at the building location today, um, having some, some basic conversations. Um, but still, either way, yes, we, we're, we're still working through those options of, of what to do with those buildings on site. This is Gary Weber. Uh, am I premature then in these concerns? Or should these really be addressed, these traffic and safety and noise? And should these really be a later issue no, 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 no. These are all issues we want to be considering now because Good. it's all going to inform how the site is laid out and what the options for, you know, uh, and, and, and it also inform things that we and the owner might not have been thinking about where we might have to do a little bit deeper dive study, especially on the traffic side of things. Okay, that sounds good. I, I yeah. want you to know that in despite all these concerns that the neighborhood has, we did support this, this, this site location and sent a letter to the city commission with that support saying that we think it's going to be beneficial to our neighborhood and beneficial to the city as a whole. So we support you, but we during the process, we wanna make sure that you address the concerns of the residents of the neighborhood. Yes, no, and we appreciate you bringing them up to it and putting them in the forefront so that we are thinking about them actively um, and not reactively later on down the line when we have great ideas that might not work for you. So we will, we will certainly do our best to address your concerns, both in, you know, in a response to you as well as within the design realm. Super, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is a t the time to bring them up, but one of the concerns I had with the, um, the transfer facility at um, Bob Billings and Crestline was just when I looked at the proposed routes, um, I work with international students and particularly international students that are here only for a short time. So none of those students have cars. Most of them don't have phones or, or US phones anyways. Um, and so the proposed routes meant for them to go down to Walmart or downtown, they had to go out to the transfer facility first. It didn't seem like there was a lot of buses going out to the transfer facility like every five or 10 minutes. And then from there they had to go to wherever they're going. And 
that just concerns me um, in that it's one more difficult for them. And two, it's going to be much more time consuming for them to go out to that facility. Um, and, you know, the main route that they use, it was, is so far the number 11 um, and that, you know, you can get anywhere on that bus um, within about a half an hour, 45 minutes. I mean, it's a long route and I understand that that's not going to change, but adding more time to that um, is a concern for students anywhere, not just international students that don't have cars or can't use their cars frequently because of parking concerns on campus. Sure. Thanks. This is Felice. I want to jump in. The um, We're yeah. still, we're in the process of our route redesign study. I think the one that you're talking about, um, and I did the report on that one, was the student uh, route design study, which, Maybe. you know, feeds into what we gave our consultant team. I'm, I'm with Lawrence Transit, by the way. Sorry, my video is off. Um, but that was kind of a preliminary student-led study. Um, so that isn't necessarily anything in that isn't what's necessarily gonna happen. But I think we did, we gave that to our consultants to kind of see what's already off the table and things like that. But we're running um, a route redesign study concurrently with this one. Um, and we can have more details out to you about how to engage with that. Um, to, okay. cause that's really good feedback. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's really important because I think it's a constituency that tends to get overlooked. Um, so, and I'd be happy to, you know, give you whatever feedback I can give and take part in whatever I can take part in. Thank you. Yeah, that's really great. Um, anybody else? Bill, Andrew, Deanne? I'm assuming you can all hear us. Really, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I joined today only from a, you know, a neighbor aspect as well as a, an employee of KU that that traverses, and I used to use the the bus system heavily. So I am anxious to hear about some of the re, rerouting because I do find that there are many things that make it very difficult to use um, our, our bus system with the current routes that are out there that you can't get anywhere that doesn't take an hour and a half. Um, but anyway, so that's, I don't really have any concerns, so to speak at this time. And hey, Gary. Hey, Deanne, good to see you. This good is Gary you. Weber again. I'm going to jump in. There was one concern expressed by a couple of people in our neighborhood association pretty strongly. As you know, houselessness has become a problem in much of the United States and in Lawrence, Kansas. A number of houseless people are living in uh, Cent Centennial Park, which is in our neighborhood and also along a river. It's estimated about 280 people are homeless and living outside, camping outside around Lawrence. Um, seven, and so we're, we're a little concerned that if, for example, you had a set of open bathrooms at this facility, that the woods behind this facility might become a place that would be welcoming to houseless people to camp out and use those, use the, the, a warm, a warm room inside and also the bathroom if there was a restroom at the facility. So if you, if you plan to make this welcoming to, to, people who want to come in and get out of the cold and use the restroom, I think we would like you to consider that that might encourage people to use it as a, a point of camping, which happens whenever there's an open restaurant, rest, restroom. So there, there was some concern about if this might not become a, a, a center for houseless people to congregate. Right. So that's always a common um, concern whenever we are talking about Placing an intermodal facility or multimodal facility into a new area in any town. Um, and it is something we will address. We will address both in the security perspective as well as a vagrancy perspective. Um, and we have already brought this up as an issue to the owners and the stakeholders. So it is clearly on our mind. There are definitely um, things we can do architecturally and from a design perspective to hinder that from happening. Um, there's no absolute solution other than, you know, probably security and policing, quite frankly. But um, we, we, yes, it is, it is top of our mind. Absolutely. Thank you. 
did have one question on uh, special events, uh, either at the university or downtown. Uh, has there been provision made for overflow parking and uh, maybe an influx of, of people coming in for a basketball game, for example, into town and they want to park there, they want to take the bus in. Uh, it, has that been considered? Yeah. The university does have a shuttle system that it deals with parking rides during games. It is not part of this project and it's not part of the service at this site. Not to say you could not, you know, write to the university or call um, the city trend spoken and, and Felicia's group and talk to them there in the middle of a route structure study. You know, maybe this is an opportunity to address something along those lines to improve a situation. Um, there is um, no park and ride component to our current study, just to be clear. There was, if you go back in the previous studies that were done, there were previous options that included park and rides with shuttles and other options. But is that part of what we're looking at right now this week? But certainly, you know, we'll track the comment and uh, you know, don't be afraid to speak to somebody during the the route study. Anybody else? Uh, this is Gary Weber. I just I just sent you our our document and letter to the city commission. So oh, yeah, remember things a minute for us to catch up. I don't know what's going on now. We've lost you all again. Okay. Oh, you're back. There you go. As soon as it, as soon as I lose you, you're back. <laughs> I just sent I I sent you the document with our concerns and questions. Fantastic. And I also received um another email from someone I just saw it pop up. I didn't see who it was from. Um, it was from someone with those in this group. So, um. We will certainly um, track that stuff, Gary, and get back to you and make sure that you are included in whatever the feedback we, you know, mechanism is for the next phase of this. I'm certain you're going to hear that there's going to be more meetings, like I said, in another month or so. <laughs> and there'll be certainly more opportunities for you to ask more questions and raise more concerns. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at today. This is good stuff, by the way. Marshall sent me his information. Looks like. So I think we're frozen again, you know, and I, I want to be respectful of people's time. It's 20 after three at this point. Um, if anybody has any more that they want to offer, please put it in the chat and we'll see if we can keep, if we can keep this thing going, but we're really struggling here on the audio side. Oh, you're back again. Um, but I also don't want to waste your time either. This is Gary Weber. I know you have plans for bike parking at this facility. I'm sure it'll be included, but I, I do want you to know that that biking and and multimodal transportation is is of growing importance in Lawrence. And and not only do we need adequate bike parking at the transfer facility, but we also need adequate bike storage on the on the buses. Right now, we're limited to two bikes on a bus, and so. As we go forward, we'd like to see a, perhaps the possibility of more bike racks on, on the buses so that more people can combine multimodal transportation, ride the bus, bring their bike, ride their bike around, get back on the bus, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Well, we'll add that note as well. No problem. All right. Well, that's it. I don't know if anybody else, is there anybody else has any more comments? Well, we really appreciate your time. You've got our email addresses. Don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and we'll be back in another month or so.